Hi everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Llama Index and Weaviate integration. In this video, I'll be going over the various indexes that are in Llama Index and I'll draw it out so you can see the architecture design and then I'll share a demo of how to use the vector store index and the list index. Thank you for watching and let's jump into the video. I just want to make it clear that there are other indexes that are offered in Llama Index, so I'd recommend checking out the documentation. Um, but the, for the point of this video, I just wanted to keep it quick and to the point with just three indexes that I used in my demo. So what the vector store index is, is it takes each node or chunk of text and stores it in a vector database along with its embedding. What the list index does is it takes the nodes and just stores it in a sequential chain. So each chunk, once it ends, the other one begins and it's kind of like that sequential order. Um, and then what the tree index is, is it has a root node and then a parent node and then each parent node has a child node. And this is obviously really good for summarization tasks. Um, but yeah, keep in mind that there are other indexes. I'm not covering it all in this video but I hope this helps and I think it would be even better to see it um, and like I can draw it out. I'm going to start with the vector store index. So what this is doing is just take, taking each node or a chunk of text and storing it along with its embedding and adding it to or importing it into the vector database. Um, so here I have my three nodes and then the embedding. I'm not a very good drawer, so let's just say the N is a node. And then let's say that this pink outline is a vector database, because that definitely makes a lot of sense, kind of, right? Okay, so given that, given the nodes and the embeddings are stored in the vector database, what it looks like when you are making a query is you take your query embedding, which I guess let's again denote that as a queue because that makes the most sense. You're going to embed that and pass that into the vector database. And why would you want to pass it into the vector database? It is because it needs to retrieve the top K documents that are most relevant for your query. Um, so what this is again is the query embedding. Okay, so once that is passed in, and let's say the first two nodes in this example are the most relevant, this will then be sent to the response synthesizer. Um, and then also the query is also sent here. So what this response synthesizer is doing is it's figuring out a way to combine the top K retrieved documents into one single output. And there are quite a few ways to configure this setting. Um, so you can have a tree summarization, uh, compact the prompt, or just use the default setting. Um, there are a few different options and I can cover that in another video, but at a high level, that is what this response synthesizer is doing. Moving on to the list index. What this is doing is taking each node and storing it in a sequential chain. So just spare some time there. Um, so here you have node one, two, and three. And it's as easy as that. Um, so what happens when you make a query is it is passing it to all of the documents or nodes if you aren't specifying a specific filter. Um, so essentially, if you don't make any um, kind of, like if you don't specify the filter for your query, then it's going to take all of the nodes and then it just passes that onto the response synthesizer, which I'll just <laughs> write as RS. Um, and this is good for short documents. And in the demo, I use this to kind of store the very short meeting notes that I have as like an example. Um, but yeah, that's what a list index is doing. Moving on to the tree index. What this is doing is building a hierarchical index from the nodes, from the set of nodes. Um, so here we have the root node and then that is divided into two parent nodes. Then each parent node is going to have a child node. Just copy and paste this four times. 
Bear with me. Okay, so now we have each parent node has its child node. So C1 and C2 summarizes the parent node one, and then obviously C3 and not, there aren't two C3s, there is C4 summarizes uh, parent two, and then that again goes up into the root node. And why this is obviously important or a good architecture design or index for summarization is because each node is carrying um, some information that is unique to child one and child two, then eventually that goes up into parent one, and then the root index is summarized. Um, and now I'll show how, what it looks like or how this is done when you are making a query. So now when querying a tree index, what this is doing is passing the query to the root node, and then it like works its way down to the uh, leaf nodes or the child node, for example. Um, so there is a way to specify the um, number of nodes, um, and this is done with the child branch factor parameter. Um, so if I set the child branch parameter to one, it's going to take this node given the one parent node. But let's say I have I set this to two, then it's going to take, it's going to use both parent nodes and then C2 and C3, for example. So then once the um, child nodes, or once you've defined the child branch factor, again, the query is sent to the root node and then the two uh, child nodes are then sent to the response synthesizer. Now I'm jumping over into the demo. In episode one, I covered how to load data into Weeb8 using Llama Index and vice versa. So in this video, I'll kind of like breeze by that. So if you aren't up to speed or aren't familiar with this process, I recommend checking out episode one and then jumping back to this video. So the first step is to connect to your Weeb8 instance and you simply do that by connecting or passing in the URL to your Weebeat instance. Um, and then after you have uh, connected to your instance, you're gonna wanna create your schema. The point of my demo is to convince a client why they need a new feature in Weebeat that we just released in 120. So for context, when I make the query, I'm using the blog post and the podcast as um, like an information source. If I'm like, why does the client need multi-tenancy? Or why can like, how can ref to vec benefit their application? These are kind of the um, sources that the language model needs because it needs to refer to the blog post and the podcast um, to have that context and understanding of what I'm talking about. All right, so first, in order to do that, we have to create the schema. Um, so here I have my blog post class and then the content. Uh, property and that is just the text that is within each blog post and then separately I have the podcast schema. So Idean and Connor post a release podcast every single time there is a new release. So what I'm doing is taking uh, VV8 120 or one uh, 117, 18, 19, and 20 as context to give to the uh, language model. And I'm not taking all the podcasts. If you are interested in taking that data set, um, I recommend our podcast search that um, was done by Connor. Now that we've uh, defined our schema, we're going to want to load in the data. All right, so first I'm going to start with the blogs. So I'm using the simple directory reader. And in the first video, I go over the various data loaders that are on the Llama Hub. Um, so in here, I have all the blogs in a data folder. So I'm simply just reading every uh, markdown file. And then for the podcast. So like I said, I'm just sticking to the release podcast and I'm using the YouTube transcript reader and then loading that in by passing in the URL to the podcast. Once I've defined the schema 
and uploaded the data, I want to build out the index. So the first one that I'll be covering is the blogs index. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, I am using the vector store index for the blog posts along with the podcasts. Um, so in the first video, I go over how to construct your vector store and then store the blogs. Um, so I won't really go into too much detail, but um, I've just created the blogs index and now separately I want to um, define my podcast index. Okay, and now the one unique thing I guess that you can say that I'm doing is I'm now going to use a list index for my meeting notes. So I actually asked ChatGPT to create a fictional meeting notes based off of like a few uh, requirements. So I'm saying that the client has a photo sharing app and um, they're in need of multi-tenancy. So here I'm just going to load in the meeting notes using the simple directory reader. Then I'm going to want to create nodes again, which is just the chunk of text. And then I'm going to want to specify that um, the list index will be using those nodes. The next step is to create a summary of each index. Um, so the first one I have my blog posts. Um, so just saying that it contains all of the blogs that are on Weebit.io and then the podcast that it covers the new releases and then also the meeting notes with my client name Connor. And then I'll just want to set the index summaries to the summaries that I just defined. Now we've gone into the part of creating a composable graph. So what this is, is it allows you to build an index on top of your index. Uh, so here I have my three indexes. Again, so I'm using the vector store index for the blogs and podcasts, and then a list index for the notes. But all in all, I'm gonna take five uh, nodes from the blogs, five from podcasts, and five from notes, and I'll have 15 nodes that will then create a list index, which I'm passing in here, and then I'm just passing in the summaries for the indexes that I had already created. Next, I will want to construct my query engine, and then now I'm on the fun part. So my question is, what is multi-tenancy and why is it an important feature for Connor's application? And in the meantime, as this run, I'll just show you what the meeting notes look like. Um, so here I have that Connor is uh, creating a photo sharing app and he has a few users and he is nervous about having shared data uh, or data leaked to different users. Okay, so here, we have the response. So it's explaining what multi-tenancy is, and then it's saying it's an important feature for Connor's application because it allows them to scale to millions of tenants while still providing each tenant with their own isolated environment. And this is perfectly explaining what multi-tenancy is and why it's, in a, and why it's important. And then if I want to print out the sources, I can see that it's taken, um, it's actually taken information from various uh, documents and then also it's considered the meeting notes as well which is why it knows who Connor is and what his application uh, covers. Thanks so much for watching the second episode of the Llama Index and Weavy integration. In this video I went over the different indexes in Llama Index and I shared a demo notebook. If you would like to get your hands on the notebook I've shared it under the we ate recipes and it's linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next video and take care. Bye.